What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Bold and Bougie. This is Season 1, Episode 2. The episode is titled Clatchet Tea Party. And let's go ahead and talk about it. So, Crystal, she is feeling away because she just wants the ladies to get to know her. This is after Tamika has already left the party because she feels like she get into people business. Um, Malaysia is out here being fake because she's acting as if what Tamika just did was so wrong and so this, that, another, but she just did the same damn thing, talking about how Mo is her friend. Um, next thing you know, the girls are having a good time at the party. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and move on because we have Tamika and she's at home. She has a random private chef who comes to help her meal prep because you know, she's just oh so busy. Doing what? Because you're no longer styling people and you have a book to talk about what? You dating Usher? Like, it's funny because she says that she doesn't mention her ex. It's like, yeah, you don't mention him. However, you do things that are attached to him. Because why is your book called Here I Stand? Didn't Usher have an album called Here I Stand? And was that around the time that he was with Tamika? Or what if they were getting a divorce? Was that the album with the divorce paper song on there? I'm trying to understand. Now, my question is, have y'all read the book? Y'all buying her book? Because I don't think I will. I don't think I'm that interested. Um, nonetheless, her oldest son comes over. He looks older than Usher. I'm like, damn, Tamika, how old are you? And how old is your kids? She ends up FaceTiming her other son, Ryan, and they talk about her son, Kyle. Now, I will say I absolutely feel terrible for Tamika for losing her son. You know, she has a petition going where she wants them to drain Lake Lanier and to restore it because Lake Lanier has taken a lot of people's lives. And I will say we should support her in that. Now, moving on. Malaysia. She goes to see her friend, Dr. Princess, and they basically just rehash what happened at the party. Now, Malaysia tells her that she wants to throw this tea party so that way all the ladies can get to know each other. And then she decides, oh, let me FaceTime Crystal and make this a we thing. As in me and Crystal, we're going to be throwing this party together because she wants Crystal to help her find venues and blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Moving on. (laughs) I'm sorry, but Malaysia is so not interesting to me. Crystal, she actually goes to see um, Gaucher. And Crystal talks about how Tamika basically came into the party not talking to her. Well, girl, she didn't know you, okay? She don't know you just like she didn't know those extras that was at the party. She probably wasn't talking to them either. Nonetheless, um, Gaucher, she's like questioning her like, well, girl, did you date Usher or something? Because it seems like her issue with you is deeper than just you know, her being friends with Mo. And Crystal, she was like, hell no, nah, hell no. Nah. I didn't date him or something like that. But her energy was given as if Usher was ugly or if Usher was a problem. I'm like, bitch, you dated Neo. Ugly ass rockhead Neo. I know you ain't tooting your nose up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but baby, you know. <laughs> Nonetheless, Crystal ends up telling O'Shea about the event that her and Malaysia plan on having together or whatever. And it seems like Crystal likes everybody except for Tamika. And I think that um, Goshe is starting to have an issue with Tamika as well. We'll get to that a little bit later. Now, speaking of Goshe, she be with one of her friends. I think the girl's name was Kayla. And they talk about how, you know... Her daughter moved in with her. Gauche's daughter moved in with her, her and her kids, because their house caught on fire. Now, keep in mind, Gauche said her son and her daughter, but I was trying to figure out, did your son and daughter live together, or are you calling your daughter's partner, like your son-in-law, just your son? I was a little confused there, but nonetheless, there was a fire. So they had to move in with Gauche. The problem was that, according to Gaucher, her daughter just took this as a free-for-all and free babysitting. 
Because I think she thought that Goshe was just going to continue to watch her kids while she rip and run the streets. So Goshe was not here for that. She felt like her daughter needed to watch her own children. And she was not about to be the babysitter because Goshe has to hit these streets, okay? Now, she briefly mentioned her son being extremely rude to one of the waiters at her restaurant. And how, you know, he just basically went to go sit himself with an attitude. And it seems like both of her children have some type of issue with her, okay? There's something about their mama that they just do not care for. Now, she does go on to tell us about how she tried to give her kids the best of everything. And there is still a disconnect. Here's one thing that I've realized. No parent is going to be perfect. There's always going to be something that your child feels like you were not great at. It just is what it is. Whether it be lack of availability, lack of finances, lack of, you know, participation. Like, there's a list of things that you could possibly be lacking as a parent. I think everybody tries their best in a way that they think is best. However, hindsight is twenty twenty. Sometimes the things that you thought your child needed, that's not exactly what they needed. And also, I do understand where Gauche is coming from as a parent. I gave my kids all the opportunities that they could possibly ever want. If y'all wanted to go to summer camp, y'all probably went to summer camp. You wanted to be on a basketball team or a volleyball team, make sure y'all were on the team. Did all the things. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure I looked at her daughter. Her daughter's probably, what, in her 30s? or so so i made sure y'all had to fly as shit on i made sure you know kids wasn't cracking jokes on y'all because y'all wasn't wearing jordans she made sure y'all was top notch yet yeah your mom wasn't there at the basketball game your mom couldn't be there because she was busting her ass (laughs) working trying to make sure she could provide this lifestyle for y'all and honestly kids can we be honest sometimes we gotta look back at it from when we were kids we was assholes to our parents. We had to have the latest this. We had to have the latest that. I had to be on the team. I had to do this. I had to do all the extra curriculars. So, yeah, these were things that we also wanted. However, we just want every part of our parent, and that's not realistic. We want our parents to provide everything for us. We want them to be fully available to us. We just want full access to our parents, and that is not what the world has given us. Hell, the average person works, what, a nine to five? That's the average shift for most of the jobs. And within that shift, your child is at school. If something is happening at the school, then your mother has to take off work, go see what's going on. These jobs do not give a fuck about these kids that you had. They still want you on the clock. Your job was your full undivided attention, okay? So if back in the day, Goshe was you know, doing hair, because remember, she's a hairstylist. I would not be surprised if she's working all hours, you know what I mean, taking last-minute appointments and everything, just trying to make sure these kids got everything. Now, one thing that Gauthier pointed out was the fact that her daughter now realizes, you know, all the sacrifices that her mom made, and I feel like she's realized that because now she has kids. So now you understand what it was like to be in your mother's shoes, Oh, I have to provide everything? I still have to be available? I still have to do all these things? Okay, yeah, you get it now. Now, moving on, you guys, we actually see Crystal in Malaysia. They meet up at this cute little tea place or whatever. And Crystal, she basically talks to Malaysia about this party that Gauthier had. And Malaysia, she's like, you know, when's the last time you even talked to Mo? Uh, Excuse me. Here's my thing. Um, Malaysia, when's the last time you talked to Mo? That's my question. Because you and Tamika are coming on the show with this energy about, oh, we're close friends to Magneta, blah, blah, blah. However, does Magneta have a problem with this girl? Because the energy that y'all on is Magneta doesn't like her. So you feel like you shouldn't like her either. And then Crystal... You know, she goes on to say that, you know, it was not too long ago. I just kind of disassociated myself with the entire situation. And I get it. You want your peace and all of that. But I do kind of wish that her and Mayetta had a cool enough relationship 
that the kids can see their siblings. You know what I mean? Because both of them have kids with this man. Um, now at this point, though, y'all, I really want them to bring my yetta on the show. Because she ain't got nothing else to do. Like, no offense. Like, she don't, she not on another reality show. So, I definitely feel like she could come on to this show. And there's a few other girls that I feel like could come on over to Bold and Bougie. If we really want to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> Quad. Quad can come on right on over here. They in Atlanta. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on. Um, go Shay. Baby. <laughs> I know them bones was hurting. I know that body was hurting that next day. Because the way she fell down them, fl- them stairs, that flight of stairs, girl, ma'am, 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 you going to have to slow your roll. Um, nonetheless, she talks to her daughter, Bianca, right? So her daughter is there to explain how, again, they played sports and their mom wasn't at the games and stuff. And she's like, but girl, I had to work so y'all could play on the team. Now, baby, let me tell you something. I don't know how much it was to be on the team back in the day. But these teams nowadays are expensive, okay? You paying a lot out of pocket. Nonetheless, her daughter, you know, she now understands her mom's re- her mom's reasoning. And we learned that Gauthier went to jail before, y'all. She got with the wrong man. He got her all tangled up in some mess. And baby girl had to go to jail for two years, okay? Not too long, but long enough. Now, what threw me off was the fact that she was like, yeah, I feel like that kind of affected my kids. But then she goes on to say they were like one and two years old. Not trying to be funny, but your kids don't even have a memory of ages one and two years old. So I think they may be all right. I think that it affected you, Goshe, because you weren't able to be a consistent, um, you know, a consistent person in your kid's life in their early stages. That's who got affected. Nonetheless, um, it seems like they're willing to work it out with a therapist. You know what I mean? They still want to be family. That's cool. Moving on, baby, it's time for the brunch. Now, Malaysia, she gets there first. And then Crystal, she get there. Baby, her ass was swinging, okay? Swinging in that little B skirt. I said, ma'am, your cheeks is out. <laughs> okay, girl. So, Crystal, she wants to play a game called Spill the Tea. And the rest of the ladies, they get there. Um, you know, Tamika, she wants the ladies to sign her petition about Lake Lanier. Now, Crystal, you know, she does feel bad for Tamika because she lost her son. She even offered her some, you know, kind words. And now the ladies, I feel like they're singing a different tune in Tamika's face. Because we have not only Crystal, but a couple of the other ladies like, oh yeah, Tamika, you know, you're such a grown woman about the situation with Mo and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Crystal, Crystal, what the hell are you talking about? Because... You were basically telling anybody who would listen how you don't really care for Tamika because of the way she came at you. So, Gaucher, who happened to be on Tamika's ass this episode, um, she's confused because she's like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? And I get it, Gaucher, because, Crystal, you told me that you felt some type of way about Tamika. So, how is it that now you don't? You magically don't feel no type of way? Things are getting weird. Okay, fine that's what we want to do so now go shay you know she basically feels like you know tamika was out of line for the way she was acting and then they all start to play this game right because keep in mind they had brought up what happened at go shay's party and everything was downplayed all right fine so they play this game and they write down misconceptions about themselves and everybody has to guess who it was about Mean and aggressive. Who was that? Crystal. Uh, the one, other one was, oh, I, they think I'm bougie. I'm bougie. Um, I'm like, yeah, it's in the title of the fucking show. <laughs> but nonetheless, Gauthier thought it was Tamika. And Tamika has peeped game that Gauthier is coming for her. So it was not actually Tamika this time. It was Princess. Y'all, come get Princess. I just don't see her as a fit on this show. Number one, her fashions are terrible. Number two. And number three, why did she say, I drink everything out of a straw? 
And then we see a champagne glass with a goddamn straw in it. Baby, when Tamika told her, yeah, that's ghetto, actually, I fucking hollered because it absolutely is ghetto. So then Gaucher, she asked her, you know, what exactly do you do? (laughs) Talking to Princess. So then Princess is like, well, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Bitch, what business? What business you got, girl? Because what you're not about to do is talk about your husband's dental office. (laughs) Because that's technically his business. So then she's like, you know, um, I created Real Housewives of Atlanta. Baby, when she breaks this down, I'm like, "Mm, okay, girl. So basically, she piggybacked off of Orange County because y'all already know Orange County came out first. So I guess she just piggybacked the idea of, well, I know there's some women in Atlanta who are rich like this. So that's basically what she did. She came up with the idea of, oh, let's do a version of Atlanta with black ladies. All right, cute girl. So then... She goes on to say, oh, you know, people, they don't acknowledge me. Um, I'm just like, girl, uh, we know Andy fucking Cohen, okay, who is over all of the Real Housewives shows, okay? It's cute (laughs) that you may have pitched the idea or whatever, but girl, please stop trying to have a woe is me moment. That is one thing that this bitch be fishing for, and I need for her to stop. Like, people don't acknowledge that I created the show. Shut up. Let's go ahead and move on, y'all. So, there's another somebody is bougie. It's Tamika, okay? She says that she's been called bougie since she was a little girl. So, then Gaucher asks her about Usher. And she wants to know, I think, how they met and how they broke up or whatever. Um... Here's the thing. Tamika is not about to answer no types of no types of questions. She's not. <laughs> but here's the thing. Gaucher had the motherfucking book that basically said that Usher actually hooked up with somebody who was supposed to be her friend. I even think the girl was a part of the wedding. I'm like, oh, okay, girl. <laughs> you want to get all the messiness in your book. I get it. You try to sell a book. Nonetheless, like I said, she didn't tell the ladies why they broke up. She ever talked about some, oh, I don't know why we broke up. Girl, stop lying. So then Princess is like, well, you know, I think you're still in love with him. And here's the thing. Tamika may very well still have love for Usher. Do I think she's in love with Usher? No. Because I feel like that relationship is so fucking old. Especially considering this man just got married, y'all. He just got married after the Super Bowl, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that her and Usher, they weren't even a match to begin with when it comes to Tamika. But I digress. Um, Tamika's like, you know, I never talk about him. Now, I will say, she hasn't been the one to bring him up. However, the ladies have. So, go Shay, she brings up this goddamn pool party one more time. I'm like, girl, please stop. But she's like, no, let's clear the air. So Malaysia, she ends up asking Crystal if she ever slid in Usher's DMs. Because they're trying to figure out if the beef between Tamika and Crystal is deeper. This can't be all about Mo. It must be that you are messing around with Usher. Malaysia, you really asked that girl that. You're two-faced as fuck. Because in one breath, you're trying to be friends with Crystal... But then you're going to try to put her on blast and be like, well, did you slide in Usher's DMs? Girl, when would she have time to do all that? You know, I mean, not even. Because this girl's supposed to be dealing with Neo. Nonetheless, then you have Gaucher chiming in like, oh, did you date Usher? I'm like, Gaucher, she already told you that she never messed around with Usher. So why would you even try to throw this out in this girl face? All these bitches is fake, okay? All of them are fake. Crystal, I really hope for your benefit that you, like, was standing on business, as the kids like to say, and you told each one of them heifers off because Malaysia fake as fuck, Gaucher being fake. What the fuck going on here? But nonetheless, y'all, that was the episode. 
go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you on my next review. Bye, guys.